Hello, hello, and welcome to my video game sound design series on Massive. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to do some cool whooshes and noisy sorts of buildups that you can use in your professional or personal video game, film, whatever media projects that you're working on. Like always, you can download the patch below, so feel free to use that link and download this. Use this for whatever you want. And what we're going to do in this video is I'm going to guide you through it, and I'm going to show you a few different variations of how you can use this whoosh to give it some different character using this noise channel at the bottom here. So let's get started. So the first thing I'm going to do, like always, is start in the oscillator section. So I'm going to start in the oscillator section. I'm going to choose for my first oscillator, poly saw one. And in this one, I'm only going to use two oscillators. I don't want too complex of a sound. So that's what we're going to start. Now, where I'm going to go with my second oscillator is this smooth square wavetable. So I have polysol one, and I have smooth square on these two right here. So what I'm going to do next up is actually just pitch down this smooth square by two octaves, so negative 24. And I'm going to play around with these intensities just a little bit, but let me play you what I have right now. Nothing too spectacular and definitely not whooshy or noisy. So I'm going to take these intensities down. And we'll play with these amp knobs later when we add some envelopes to them. And next up, what we're going to do is start in the modulation oscillator down here. So what we're going to do is use a phase modulator on oscillator one. And if you don't know what this is, you can watch my basics videos where I cover how all of this stuff works. So if I'm going too fast, I have five tutorial videos that cover the basics of Massive and what everything does. So we're going to do a phase modulator on oscillator one. And I'm going to go down, pitch this modulator down to negative seven. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to play around with this phase and see where I'd like a good starting point to be. So let's start down there. We already have kind of a cool sound as it is. We're going to make a noisy whoosh, but maybe at the point we're at now, you can ha have some weird sci-fi bubbly car engine thing. Neat. Very cool. So. Next up, what I'm going to do is go down to this noise channel here, and I'm just going to turn the amplitude knob up, just so we can hear the noise. So now you hear that hiss, and we're going to play around with the noise a little more later, but that's a good starting point for now. And next up, what we're going to do is have these filters turn on. So let's have a high pass filter because we want a noisy, hissy sort of whoosh. We want those high frequencies to pass through. And I'll turn this cutoff down and this resonance down. I'll make sure that both of my oscillators are going to filter one using these faders here. Now I'll play something for you. All right, cool. Getting somewhere. Maybe it's not a whoosh yet, but it will be very soon. So now what I'm going to do is turn on an insert down here. So one of the insert effects at the very bottom. And I'm going to use the parabolic shaper, which is kind of a wave shaper, which can be a form of distortion. And I'll turn, leave the dry wood alone. Let's turn the drive down and see where I'd like it to be. So you can hear the more I turn that up, the more crazy and distorted it gets. Let's pitch my keyboard up and hear how that sounds in a more middle range. So that sounds kind of neat. It's very aggressive, which eventually will turn into something pretty cool and noisy. So we'll start around there. Again, we'll play around with some envelopes in just a second to make things a little more characteristic of a noisy whoosh. And what I'm going to do now is add some reverb before we start adding some envelope automation to a whole bunch of our parameters. So reverb will be very helpful for having a noisy buildup and whoosh. So I'm going to turn this reverb just all the way up right now. I know for sure that that's what I want. Let's turn the size down just a bit and let's hear how that sounds. Cool. That's 
a reverberated weird engine buzzy sort of sound. And just for funsies, I'm going to add a second reverb because why not? So again, I'm going to turn this all the way up. And let's see if I just leave this here. Cool. So we just have more reverb on it now because I added a second reverb plugin. Great. We'll play around with this later probably. All right. So next up, I'm going to start using envelopes because we need things to build in volume and then linger afterwards so we have a build up to a big whoosh or a stinger as it were. So what I'm going to do is start assigning some envelopes to a whole bunch of parameters here. And in this patch, I'm going to use only envelopes, no LFOs or anything like that. So I'm going to take this envelope one and assign it to this amplitude of oscillator one. And what I'm going to do is turn this amplitude all the way down here, but make it so it has a big range. So that envelope one, this shape of envelope one, will turn this volume up gradually over time. And I want this attack to be a little bit slower. So maybe something around there. So it'll take a longer time for the volume to hit maximum. And I'm going to do the same sort of thing on oscillator two, except I'm going to use envelope four, just so I can control the parameters of each of these individually. So let's increase this attack a little more here. And now I want this intensity of this first oscillator to also be automated by an envelope. And I'm going to use envelope two for that. We'll play around with these parameters. Let's make it so the attack takes a little bit longer. Maybe the decay is a little bit longer. The level's a little louder. And let's increase that range. So now let's play it and see where we're at. Very cool. We're getting to a whooshy sort of noisy buildup. And right now, this patch is probably pretty useful. You might be able to use this for some sort of sci-fi effect. But we're going to keep going and see where this takes us. So I'm going to take envelope two. Again, we've already assigned this somewhere else. But we're going to assign it to this modulation oscillator. So we have this phase building over time as well. Now let's listen to it. Again, we already have a super cool sounding sci-fi patch as it is, so this is pretty neat. Now we're going to keep going though, of course, as we do. So what I'm going to do now is take this envelope two. Once again, I'm going to attach it here to this pitch zone in the modulation oscillator. Very cool. So that's where we're starting right now. And what I'll do as well is take this envelope too, which we're using quite a bit, and automate the drive of this parabolic shape or distortion that we had earlier. So now if I play something, so it distorts more over time, which is a cool effect that I'm a big fan of, especially in this sort of context. So now what I'll do is I'll take, again, envelope two, because it has a good shape right now that I may play with in a moment. And what I'll do is I'll make it so that the cutoff actually goes down as time goes on using this envelope shape. Cool. It's getting more and more kind of full of character, which is exactly what we're looking for. And now what we can do is play around with these filter filter knobs right here and see what we're really going for, see what we want out of these filters. So maybe I'm going to increase this cutoff and see how that sounds. So we can get rid of a lot of that kind of buzziness by using this cutoff, but I like it in there. And now what I'm going to do is pitch my keyboard down. Let's go negative two octaves and hear how that sounds. Nice. I like that. Now, one thing I'm going to do is attach a envelope to the amplitude knob of this filter or this noise right here. Now what this will do is increase the volume of the noise over time. So the noise isn't going to be playing. It'll be building just like everything else. 
And if I increase the attack of this envelope one, it'll take a little longer to get to max volume, but I'm gonna turn that back down. And now what I'm gonna do is add a little bit of EQ. So at the very right here. And let's play around with these parameters to see what sort of sound we can get. So if you want a lot less of that buzz, you can turn down those low frequencies, or of course, you can add more in. You can also add in more brightness using this high shelf over here. And one cool thing about this patch and any sort of whooshy thing you can do in Massive is that you can change the character of the sound by changing the noise that you have selected down here. Now, by default, it uses white noise, which is the bright hiss that you're hearing in the background. But one cool thing we can do is actually change our noise type and we change the color and characteristic of the sound. So we can try, let's say, aluminum and hear how that sounds. It should be pretty bright sounding. Definitely very bright. If we go down to metallic, it'll sound kind of like a sword. Which can be pretty neat. I do like that. And of course, if I want something really crazy sounding, I can use Murmur, which has a really cool character to it. it sounds like a million gnomes murmuring all together. It's really neat. So it can add kind of an otherworldly, almost horror character to it. And you can play around with this color knob as well to change the sound of that noise as well. So I like Murmur a lot. I really like that dark sound to this Murmur. And that's it. That's how we create a whoosh in Massive. A lot of it has to do with using these envelopes so that things build over time. So they don't start at max volume right away so that they just kind of ramp up and then decay as you let go of the keyboard. Reverb is also very, very helpful in this regard. I added some distortion just to give it more character. And my choice of oscillators, again, is because of character. You can choose any one and still get a cool whoosh at the end of it. It's up to you. But I chose these ones because I wanted a kind of a noisy, sci-fi, sort of aggressive stinger whoosh effect. So that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Of course, if you liked it, hit the thumbs up, subscribe to the channel because I make a video like this every single week without fail. And of course, sign up for my newsletter. For those of you who want a career in the game industry, that's where I share all of my best stuff is right on my newsletter. You can see it on this ending screen soon or right now. It should show like a little book with a little gift wrap around it. That's where I share my ebook that teaches you how to charge clients and get paid for your professional work in the game industry. So sign up there, watch my GDC Europe talk on the sound of Hyperlight Drifter so you can see how I made the sound effects for that game. And I will see you in the next video. Thanks so much.